Tom and Jack for Cultaholic. And it's another day where we're reporting on some sweeping changes to the landscape of WWE. More releases uh, from the company. Not so much in front of the camera. One exception to that, which we will talk about at the end of this video. But lots going on behind the scenes. Some deep cuts uh, to some big departments within WWE. Uh, some departments shut down, dissolved altogether. Um, it's, it's just, this is once again another week where we're talking about WWE binning off a lot of people, right, Jack? Yeah, it's very, very sad indeed. Um, and I think, as you mentioned to me off camera, it's a lot of names that maybe people aren't going to be too familiar with or, or mm. certainly be less familiar with, with some of them. But um, they're, they're still, as we'll discover in this video, still very crucial members behind the scenes in WWE. So it, it's, it's, you know, it's just as... It's just as uh, it's going to affect them just as much as if they'd been a wrestler being let go, essentially. Maybe even more so. Exactly. Uh, well, well, we'll go through the names in no particular order that, that have been uh, let go from the company. Brian Pelagato, Senior Vice President of Production. He's been with them for just over nine years, coming over from ESPN, where he was a senior digital producer. Uh, he rose through the ranks and he was named Vice President of Senior and, and Digital and Social Media in July of 2015. He was uh, Senior Vice President in March 2019. That was the role that he had up until yesterday xavier woods was one of those that took to twitter uh, to to publicly thank brian didn't he jack yeah he thanked him for various different things as well he gave him credit for the second screen wwe app saying that before he was booked uh it gave him platform to practice his mic skills on he said that he wouldn't have had a creative space to build chemistry with Big E and Kofi Kingston once he was booked with WWE. He said he wouldn't have been able to create Up Up Down Down, obviously a huge passion project of his, a very successful one as well. And uh, he says basically he wouldn't have the life that he had now. He's credited him for basically a lot of his success in his career. James Wortman is a content director or was a content director for WWE for over 11 years. He joined WWE mm. as a multimedia producer back in 2010 with a landscape looked very, very different. Uh, he was handling their multimedia content for Monday Night Raw, and, uh, which, was, which was featured on WWE.com. Uh, promoted last year to the role that he had up until yesterday, just before the pandemic broke out. as a role that he took on and... It's, again, a role he no longer has as part of a massive restructuring. Adam Kirshner is the manager of media and metadata operations. So he's been with them over 15 years. Again, a lot has changed in his role since he joined. He was an intern very early on for WWE.com. And he ended up working his way through the ranks, being a part of WWE's associate production team for the Top 10 and the Inbox series on YouTube. He was senior producer for the company's digital media team as they grew the channel. He was part of the relaunched WWE Network, and he helped with the migration of the network to Peacock. Uh, Adam Kirshner has tweeted out a special thank you to WWE as well, hasn't he, Jack? Yes, he says, as of today, I'm no longer with WWE. I've had a tremendous career and had the honor to build the greatest team. From the first ever dot .com, in, uh, from the first ever dot .com intern to a leader, I've seen and done it all. And I'm truly looking forward to giving this same 110% and then some wherever I land. It's, I mean, it's a nice thing to tweet, but it's obviously very bittersweet as well because he, he's been let go essentially after a long time. And what I'm learning as we're reading out these names is that um, they're not just people who could potentially be easily deemed redundant or whatever, as heartless as that sounds anyway. But these are people who've been with the company before social media was even a thing in some cases, or certainly not the thing it is today, and they've helped them step into that world. So it does seem... It does seem pretty brutal in certain cases. They've really adapted what they do and learned along the way. And mm. it's, it's a part of it. And, you know, we'll get to some of the reasons as why in a little bit. But a few more names. Well, one, more, one other name to let you know about, which is Jay Rosenstock. Uh, he's the EVP of International. Uh, PWInsider.com reported this one. Actually, PW Insider, massive thank you to them. Uh, they have, they, they've been getting behind the scenes on all of this throughout yesterday. Mm. A lot of love uh, for our friends at PW Insider. They report that a number of major international office staffers were let go today as well as Jay Rosenstock. Uh, the story that is coming out of this, uh, this is all from Nick Khan. This is all Nick Khan, who is a, a very powerful player now within WWE. And he is personally going to be overseeing the international offices going forward in order to help them line up with WWE's US offices as well. WWE Studios heavily cut. This comes from Deadline.com who say that WWE Studios had heavy cuts within the film, TV and digital 
departments, uh, everything being reorganized and streamlined as well. Nick Khan, once again, was the one involved in this. He was the one that informed uh, people let go that they were going. Um, in this, this is heartbreaking. PW Insider reaching out to somebody within WWE Studios who described yesterday as a bloodbath for the division. So many people let go from there. They've still got a movie they haven't brought out yet. Rumble was set to come out a year ago. Mm. Then it was pushed back to January. Presumably that is still on 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 time. We think. We'll see. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. One would think so. Uh, the Advanced Media Group uh, was all but destroyed yesterday. So this is uh, a, a, this is the division within WWE that's built a lot of award-winning digital content over the years. Again, a massive part of the restructuring. PW Insider uh, have revealed what was said to those who stuck around after yesterday. What was described as a bloodbath yesterday. What was it they said, Jack? They said that um, they said that. Basically, everyone who remained in the in the advanced media group and digital divisions would now report to Kevin Dunn in the TV department, obviously merging of groups and everything. But apparently, the, I mean, it's kind of funny in one way, but not. It's described here as gallows humour. There was a bit of a joke going around uh, that those who were let go pointed out that just in the last week, the company had sent out an email, uh, an internal email, offering bonuses for employee referrals, and that now maybe they should just refer themselves and they'll get their jobs back plus the bonuses on top. So at least they're making a joke of it, but it's... <laughs> It's obviously yeah. very heartbreaking as well because it's one thing to talk about the kind of the bigger names that we've just mentioned before there who've uh, had who've risen through the ranks and presumably will will be will be all right going forwards because they've got all this experience now and they've got you know they've they've done it all basically to get another job in a similar field whereas I'm assuming a lot of these people in these departments AMG and and the WWE studios a lot of them are probably just you know normal staff is just doing a job just trying to get by and it's it's very it's very sad indeed. With AMG, they were part of a team that would it was that was a project that was set up within WWE, and they were right. really proud of the the department that they built. And yesterday, it was pretty much dissolved. Instead, yeah. um, PW Insider uh, goes into some of the details as to why all this is happening, and, and and in a horrible way, some of it does make sense because WWE determined there were far too many redundancies across multiple departments during the pandemic, and they wanted to streamline their operation. They were also told that the departures are a ripple effect of the company running under the pandemic. They see that they can get by with far less numbers than they currently have. And one person even told PW Insider that WWE have shown many times that they can cut to the bone if needed and still get things done. This is the latest example of that. Uh, Shell-shocked employees uh, is, is what we're hearing from all of this as well. People who remain uh, knowing they have more responsibilities to deal with on the daily. But it's interesting when some of the things that come from this, you realize how, uh, how big this company was. They, they had two separate graphics departments until yesterday mm. they had a, they had a graphics <clears throat> department for, for wwe tv and a graphics department uh for 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 wwe digital so like part of this is is sort of go well let's just have one graphics department let's all play from the same hymn sheet and, and so a lot of that is where all this has come from but it doesn't make it any easier uh, for, for anybody that's been really badly affected by all of this you know? no not at all not at all and also i think that you know, we'll we'll have to. I mean, time will tell whether this will in whether they can indeed function as more of a skeleton crew, or whether this will have an effect. Because you're gonna, I mean, the people presumably still working there are gonna are gonna be, you know, they're gonna have multiple times the workload now because they've got less help, I suppose. Exactly. We'll we'll keep you up to date with everything that happens with this as we get it throughout the day. At cultaholic.com. The other notable uh, release from the company that we're going to talk about is one that you you may have seen break last night he's been there for six weeks uh, adnan verk has parted ways with wwe what's the story here jack um it was a mutual agreement apparently they both mutually agreed to part ways um wwe said in a short statement wwe and adnan verk have mutually agreed to part ways thank you adnan for your work uh, he then issued his own statement on Twitter saying thanks to WWE for a wonderful opportunity the weekly travel along with my other jobs was a grind for me and my family I'm grateful to everyone within the company especially Corey Graves uh, who presumably helped him quite a lot with with commentary now um, according to a source close to WrestleTalk he's already been approached by Cam Soda 
who, um, as well as doing naughty calm videos, it says. Guess, uh, guess or, which bit was my writing? Was that you then? Was that you? <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't fit. I couldn't write anything worse than naughty calm videos. Fair enough. Uh, they promote fight circus as well out of Thailand, and he's apparently be, apparently been offered uh, fifty thousand dollars to do play by play for a future show with fight circus. So that's fair enough. I I understand fully if if what he's saying is true, and that it was because just the travel, just the the workload and everything, and the schedule was just. He wasn't seeing enough of his family. Fully understand that 100%. But I think also, it, this is just my opinion, but I didn't feel like it was really clicking for him, to be honest. It's, it's six weeks is, it's still not enough time oh, to really yeah. bed. It's, it's, I think the one thing that we learn from these commentary jobs is that at the very least, it's got to be in your bones to do mm. it. Like, and, and Adnan Verk, you know, was a learning wrestler, wrestling fan that was learning on the job. And, I think throwing him in on Monday Night Raw mm. was was a was a big issue. I don't know why we had to put him on Monday Night. I know obviously because he's a, he's he's a name in terms of broadcasting, and it's like well we don't want to put him on anything less. But you're exposing him so much by throwing him straight into that and accept, expecting him to, to 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 float. You know, it's like you yeah. know. I mean, you you take someone like I mean in the UK, like you take someone like Gary Lineker, who is a, an exceptional sports analyst. Yeah, you couldn't put him on NXT UK. You couldn't well, put no. him on Raw. You couldn't. He's and he's a great analyst. He's like you wouldn't expect him in six weeks to go. Here is wrestling. Here yeah. is what it's all about. Oh, by the way, there's a guy in your ear who's going to tell you what to say, yeah. and, but to do it in your own way. So you've got all of that going. Uh, oh, it'd be a head pickler, an absolute yeah. head pickler. Well, it's, we, it's it's bizarre that they that they really threw him in the deep end like that. I don't know why why the appointment was first made. I'm assuming just based on name value, as you say. Yeah, I think I think it's that it's always been that thing that Vince wants to establish WWE, legitimize WWE, and and having those notable sports anchors in there kind of mm. helps them do that. And it, you know, Pat McAfee on SmackDown has that sort but of. But he, but he's different, isn't he? It is in yeah. his bones, as you would say. It's in his bones, mentioned. but he's also got that sports gravitas that he brings yeah. with it as well. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's it's a little bit of that. We wish Adnan Vert the best. Oh, hundred percent. You know, you know, it was a it was a it was a, a short a short and passionate fling with WWE. Uh, no no idea on who's going to take that role next and whoever it is good luck mm. <laughs> best of luck to you more news later on stay safe love you bye